What is up, you wonderful people? This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Want to make a quick vid talking about the A7C and how I think it's the perfect companion to the A7S III for primarily for uh, you know video creators, people who make vids. Just rapid fire all my thoughts about it. Had it for about six weeks now. This is a bit of a six week review. First things first, look how small this thing is. It's a bit of a pro and a con, honestly. Like, yeah, it's great to be able to have a camera body that fits in the palm of your hand and is very capable and that sort of thing. It just, it fits in the palm of my hand, but it doesn't really fit in my hand. <laughs> Especially when I have like a long lens on it. Um, you know, it, it's just hard to get a really good feel to be able to to shoot with. So that's a small thing, but I do like how small it is and how it's easy to just carry around everywhere. The primary reason that I got it and the primary reason that I think you should get it is because I wanted a higher megapixel version of the A7S III, if you will, in order to take thumbnails and stills. My last camera was a Canon EOS R, really fell back in love with taking stills and wanted something that I was able to crop in a little bit more than uh, what I'm able to do on the a7S III and still feel comfortable with it. I was really going back and forth in my mind between like, should I just order another a7S III and wait for it? Uh, or should I go something higher megapixel? And I decided to go this route. I think it was the right choice, but I think there's an argument to be made for like, maybe you should just get two of these cameras, two, two a7S III's and don't worry about this extra eight megapixels that you're getting in the A7C. That said, I do love the added ability to crop and just those extra megapixels, I do end up using them fairly often. I didn't put any <laughs> huge pro if you've been looking at the Sony Alpha 1, which just came out a couple days ago. It doesn't have this, you know, the flippy vloggy screen, something that is very important to me. When I was testing out the A7 III, uh, before I had either of these cameras, I just really wouldn't reach for it when I was vlogging. I'd reach for my EOS R because of the flip screen. Just so, you know, being able to see yourself when you're shooting, check your shot is just is just crucial. It's vital. So that's that's really helpful, especially if you're thinking of vlogging on this thing. Also, for taking thumbnails, I'm often in the thumbnail that I'm taking, and so to be able to set up the shot. Uh, like this, very easy. Yes, there's workarounds if you wanted to go for something that didn't have this flippy screen. By all means, there's workarounds. But for me, the flippy screen is actually very crucial. I am a, I am a vlogger. Before I continue, let me tell you about Squarespace where the templates are fantastic. Any of us who are shooting photos or videos, we all need a website to be able to showcase our work in a professional way, get more clients, get more money to buy more cameras, you know, the, the cycle that, that we are all in. Squarespace is the place to build your website if you're not a professional web developer, but you want your site to look professional. So much functionality is built in to this website. It's insane. You can do anything that you want to do. Scheduling appointments, selling products, booking consults. It's easy to set up redirects to help your affiliate links all look super clean when you're putting them in descriptions. Like, it's just a great platform for doing what we all need to do on the web. If you want to try it out, go to www.squarespace.com slash Cody Warner and get a two week free trial. And then when you're ready to buy, use the code Cody Warner to get 10% off your first purchase. Okay, probably my biggest two gripes with the camera. Number one is that it's got this thumb scroll wheel here, but it doesn't have any scroll wheel up here. And that's, you know, I've just gotten very used to the A7S III and I have scroll wheel here, which I have on aperture and a scroll wheel here, which I have on shutter. Now to go shutter here, and aperture on this wheel, I just always end up reaching for the wrong spot and just it takes that extra couple of seconds to set something up or to dial in my settings. So that is one area where it's kind of hard to switch back and forth between these two cameras. Second biggest thing is the menu system and the touch screen on this. It doesn't have all of the touch functionality that the A7S III has. So where you can just navigate menus on the A7S III, you can just uh, like tap the screen to change stuff. 
Um, it doesn't do that. You're pressing buttons on the back and that's fine. It does just feel like a, a bit of a step back and it is one of those things where it's like, it takes me a couple extra seconds when I'm setting up stuff on this because I'm used to just being able to touch the screen on the A7S III. Image quality is fantastic, both in video and in photo. Again, I primarily got this as a photo camera but I wanted it to be capable in video as well. I'm very impressed with all of the images that I've gotten out of it. Love the colors of it. Love the way you can manipulate it. Workflow is fantastic. You know, these file sizes aren't huge, 20 megapixels. I shoot standard color profile on both of these, like no picture profile, just standard color. And then I adjust it a little bit and I swap back and forth between them in videos and without any sort of grading or correction to try to get the two to match. Like I know it doesn't match perfectly, but it's close enough that I'm comfortable with it being like, okay, that's his A camera, that's his B camera. I like the look of it. Viewfinder on this puppy. I don't use it a lot. I'm mostly just looking at the back of the camera, but it is like noticeably not great. <laughs> I heard some complaints about like it's uncomfortable but I actually think it's super comfortable. I actually like that it's on the side. I like that it doesn't have like this big eye piece coming off, like just like, yeah, hold your eye up there and you're good to go. But I'm just saying the quality of it isn't, you know, isn't my fave. I did have the autofocus settings set wrong on it for video. For photo, like it was working fine. Face detection was just always working and that's what messed me up. I was using it for photo. My first video I shot on it, I had the sensitivity set too high and uh, it was pulsing in and out. So, so I did change the AF transition speed to three and the AF shift subject sensitivity down to two and that worked perfectly for me. The autofocus on this in video is not on par. It's not equal to how amazing it is on the A7S III, but again, it's a lesser camera. So I wasn't expecting the best where it just works well as a compliment. The in-body image stabilization, honestly, on both of these cameras isn't amazing. I'm used to the Panasonic GH5 and how great that IBIS is. So neither of these is great. Uh, the A7S III is slightly better than the A7C. But uh, but yeah, that's kind of my thought. It's like, don't buy these cameras if your number one priority is IBIS. Last thing I'll say is the battery on these two cameras is the same. So I love being able to just swap batteries, charge batteries, it's all the, all the same battery. That's fantastic. I think that's it. I think that's everything. Thanks so much for being here. See you in the next one.